Example 10. A small company of science writers found that its rate of profit in thousands of dollars after t years of operations is given by p prime of t equals, in parentheses, 7t plus 7, close parentheses, open parentheses, t squared plus 2t plus 9, close parentheses, raised to the 1 fourth. Part A. Find the total profit in the first four years. So the first thing we want to recognize is that this is the rate of profit, which is the derivative. That is, how is the profit changing? And it's in thousands of dollars, but we'll wait until the very end, and we'll multiply our answer times a 1,000 to get the answer. For the first four years, what we have to do, and notice we're not asked for the rate of the profit, we're asked for the profit so we're asked for P of T between the years of zero and four. So that means I have to do the integral from zero to four of this function, seven T plus seven times T squared plus two T plus nine to the one fourth DT. Now, since I have a base raised to a power that is differentiable, I'm going to have to use substitution. So I'm going to let my u be t squared plus 2t plus 9. So the derivative of that u with respect to the variable t is 2t plus 2. Now, I want to substitute for all the t's and the dt. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this by dt. And I need parentheses because it's times both terms, but I don't want to put it beside each term, and you'll see why in a few minutes. So that's going to give me du is, in parentheses, 2t plus 2 dt. And I'm going to isolate the dt by dividing both sides by 2t plus 2. Now, momentarily, we're going to have a mixture of t's and u's, and so we don't want to put these endpoints on our new integral because those are only appropriate for t's. To an indefinite integral, 7t plus 7, I don't have anything to substitute for that yet. Inside here is u, so u to the 1 4. And for the dt, I now can substitute du over 2t plus 2. Now, I can't do the integration with mixed variables. I need all of those t's to be substituted for. But actually, if I reduce, look what happens. If I take a 7 common factor out of 7t plus 7, I get 7 times t plus 1. I've got u to the 1 4. I've got du. And if I take a 2 out of 2t two plus 2, that's going to be 2 times t plus 1. And look, all of my t variables have reduced out now because I have a t plus 1 factor in the numerator and a t plus 1 factor in my denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this 7u to the 1 fourth. And look, there's a 2 in the denominator, du. And so that's just a power rule. Again, no endpoints because we're in U's now, not in T's. When we get this integrated and simplified, we'll go back in and we'll evaluate it at those given points. So that's going to be 7 over 2 U to the 1 fourth plus 1 divided by 1 fourth plus 1. So that's 7 over 2, u of the 5 fourths, divided by 5 fourths. When I divide by a fraction, I invert and multiply. So that's going to be times 4 fifths, u to the 5 fourths. And so I can 
Simplify 2 into 4 is a 2, and so that's going to be 14 over 5, u to the 5 fourths. So now we'll go back to the, using the t variable, and resubstitute what u is, and we'll have our formula for p of t. So p of t will be 14 over 5 times t squared plus 2t plus 9 raised to the 5 fourths. So now for part A, to find the profit for the first four years, we need to take this integrated function and find it at 4 and then at 0 and subtract those. So I've got to do 14 over 5 times 4 squared plus 2 times 4 plus 9 to the 5 fourths minus 14 over 5 times 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 9 to the 5 fourths. And be careful because sometimes when you evaluate that at 0, you get 0. But look, because of this plus 9, we don't have a 0 there. So I've got to do 14 fifths times, if I add all this together, 4 squared plus 2 times 4 plus 9, that's 16 and 8 and 9, that's 33 to the 5 fourths minus 14 fifths, 9 to the 5 fourths. So I'm going to enter this in my calculator using the fraction key for these fractions. So 14 fifths and 5 fourths, 14 fifths and 5 fourths. And then I'll do it manually in case you don't have a fraction key. You should have a fraction key on your calculator that looks like this, the ABC key. If you're using the uh, re required calculator, you should have that. So 14 fraction 5 times 33 raised to the 5 fraction key 4. That's 221.4626316. I'm going to go ahead and go multiple decimal places, and you'll see why in a minute. We've got to multiply this by 1,000 and then round to the whole number. So for the second part, 14 fraction key 5 times 9 to the 5 fraction key 4 is 43. Point six four seven six eight zero oh, three five. Now I'm going to subtract that two two one point four six two six three one six. Subtract forty three point six four seven six eight zero oh, three five is one seven seven point eight. One four nine five one three thousand. So that means times a thousand. So that's going to move my decimal point three places to the right. So my final answer is going to be one seven seven eight one. Now look, that's going behind the four, so that nine is going to make that a five. So the answer for part A, the total profit for those first four years is $177,815. Now, if you don't have that fraction key, this is a lot harder. You're going to have to use your exponent key, and you're going to have to remember to put parentheses around your fractions. So I'm going to have to do 14 divided by 5 times 33 raised to the 5 divided by 4. That's if you don't have a fraction key. So parentheses, 14 divided by 5 
parentheses, 33, close parentheses, raised to the parentheses, 5 divided by 4. And that gives you the same thing, the 221.4626316. So just remember, if you don't have a fraction key on your calculator, make sure that you put the parentheses around your fraction expressions or the calculator will follow the correct order of operations, but it's not what you intend. So in part B, we're, we're being asked to find the profit in just the sixth year of operation. Now remember that this integral is giving you the sum of all the years. So if we want to find just the sixth year, what we have to do is find the sixth year and the fifth year and subtract out the first five years. So this is the total profit for six years, and that includes all of the five years. So if we subtract out the five years worth from the total through six years, we'll be left with just the profit in the sixth year. So I'm going to do the same thing. We're just going to evaluate this first at six. So 14 over five, six squared plus 2 times 6 plus 9 to the 5 fourths minus 14 over 5, 5 squared plus 2 times 5 plus 9 to the 5 fourths. And so you could just type that in your calculator completely, but I'll go ahead and simplify the inside and then it'll be a little bit easier to type into the calculator. So I've got 36 plus 12 plus 9. That's 57 to the 5 4, 14 fifths times 57 to the 5 fourths. And then I've got 5 squared, which is 25 plus 10 plus 9. So that's a 44. So either putting parentheses around your fractions and using the division key or using the, the fraction key, 14 fraction key 5, parentheses 57, close parentheses, exponent key parentheses 5 divided by 4 is... 438.5323143 minus 14 fraction key 5 parentheses 44 raised to the 5 fraction key 4 is 317.302779. I could have entered the whole thing and not had to write it down and um, subtract it, but I wanted to enter those so you can t check to make sure you're doing those parts correctly in your calculator. So I'll do the subtraction, and I get 121.2295344. Now that's thousands. So they want us to multiply it by a thousand to get one two one comma two two. Wait a minute now, comma. Now look at this five. This five is going to cause that to round up to two thirty. So two three zero. So just for the sixth year, our profit is $121,230. Now in part C, they're asking us what's happening to the profit over the long run. And really, all we have to do is look at this formula for the change in the profit. If we were to look at this function where T is from zero to infinity. Because remember, t they're asking us what's happening into the future. So time into the future. Well, this is always going to be positive. Because if you put a positive number in here, this is going to be positive. 
And if you put a positive number in here, this is going to be a positive. And even if you take the root of it, it's still going to be a positive. So if the derivative, if P prime of T is always greater than zero, that means profit is always increasing. Because remember, the derivative tells you if the function is increasing or decreasing. And when you have a positive derivative, no matter what your critical numbers are, we don't even have to look for critical numbers. Because we know if we put positive numbers into this, it's always going to be positive. 